I think the most important thing is not to regard China's success, success as a threat. Um, one of the crudest examples of um, geopolitics is to think that the 21st century is going to be a struggle for hegemony. The only time we use that word is when we're talking about international relations, hegemony um, between China and America. I think that would be a very negative um, way of looking at our futures, and I don't think it's true either. Um, we couldn't conceivably believe for a start that the world would be better off if China was still dirt poor. The fact that over the last 25 years, 30 years, slightly longer, um, China has lifted itself um, out of poverty, that it's become the workshop of the world in that short time, that's very good news for the world. It's one of the reasons for the deflationary boom that we've enjoyed, um, at least until the last year or so. So China's economic success is everybody's economic success. To have one and a quarter billion people joining the world economy is, is a terrific story. Uh, I think the great um, challenge for China is how it can accommodate people's political aspirations, which inevitably develop to what's happening economically and socially. Uh, in China, um, there is a debate about whether um, the, if the party continues to give up control over the economy, it'll go on being able to control the state. And on the other hand, um, there are those who say, well, unless we continue to give up control over the economy, we won't produce the growth that produces the jobs that we require. In those circumstances, the party will certainly lose control of the state. And the, the great um, dilemma which China faces is that both those propositions are true. Um, and the way China handles that um, problem is going to be fantastically important, not only for China's future, but for all our futures, because it wouldn't possibly be to our advantage if China did anything other than continue to develop uh, economically, politically, as smoothly as possible with the maximum stability. The Olympics seem to be a focal point for both China rising and China reprising. Which is it? Which should it be? I think that China would um, do itself the biggest service and show that China is rising um, if it was able to demonstrate in the way that the games are handled and run that it isn't also reprising. Um, to give you an example of that, it's inconceivable that during the Olympic Games there won't be one or two protests about some aspects of life in China. Inconceivable that there aren't any journalists who've read reports by Amnesty International. Inconceivable that there aren't any journalists concerned about Falun Gong, about environmental policy, about Tibet, about a whole range of things, whether in China's eyes correctly or, or not. Um, that is bound to happen. And I hope that the Chinese will recognize that um, demonstrating proper restraint in handling those occasional examples of um, views from other societies or views from elsewhere, I hope they'll recognize that restraint in those things is, um, for the rest of us, a mark of how China has, has changed, not become weaker, but become stronger because it's able to cope with those things without using strong-arm tactics. Which myth would you most enjoy busting about China? I think the Chinese have been pretty good at busting their own myths. First of all, it's very important for us in the West not to talk endlessly about the emergence of China as a great power. China's been a great power for millennia um, until the 1820s, until the Industrial Revolution, it represented maybe 30% or thereabouts of world GDP. Um, so what we're seeing is the spin of the wheel. We're seeing 
the re-establishment of China as probably the biggest economy in the world, which after all it's been for 18 out of the last 20 centuries. Um, I think the myth that we will see shattered is the notion that when it comes to democracy or the rule of law, there is something um, Confucian um, which uh, repels those concepts. I think that's complete nonsense.